It is the Martha Zoller Show, and uh, yeah, we had both presidential candidates, um, presumptive presidential candidates in our state on Saturday. Uh, the former president was in Rome. The current president was in Atlanta, and it's been busy, and everywhere, immigration and borders are part of the discussion. Blanquita Collum is joining me right now. Blanquita is an old friend of mine. She actually is from Texas. She has been working on uh, Hispanic and broadcasting and a wide range of issues throughout her life. And I thought it'd be a great time to hear from her again. Blanquita, how are you? I'm wonderful, my dear friend. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So just give us a 30,000 foot view of where we are on the border right now and the kind of work that needs to be done because you've been on the front lines of this for a very long time. It's been interesting because I'm on the Texas Border Coalition. And, uh, you know, my mother was a Mexican citizen her entire life. And I grew up with family on both sides of the border. still have many members of my family in Latin America. But I think Americans don't understand Mexicans uh, and many Latin Americans because, you know, it's a broad broad scope all the way from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and then South America with, you know, Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia. They don't look at uh, just the people coming across as just one type of person. They understand there's a lot of activity going on with the cartels, and most Americans do not realize that Latin Americans are not happy about the cartels. For example, Martha, I don't think most people understand that the cartels are making $38 million a week just in the area of human trafficking. That means up to a billion dollars a month supplied with little girls, little boys, women, men. They're being used as mules, and it's violent and evil. You've got even uh, many of the leaders in in countries like Venezuela, some are concerned about what's going on in Mexico that have ties to the cartels. So it's a very serious issue that we are, as a a good society, I mean, Americans are, are wonderful, and they don't like bullies. They don't like people to be cruel to each other. They don't like to target people. But at some point, they need to wake up and understand that uh, it it is a serious crisis that is not only coming to a a state near you, it's going to affect the entire uh, direction of of our future as a free people and as the leaders of the free world. I mean, we've been, you know, what does they say that we've been, we're a good country because we, we try to be good, but we also have to understand Even as a parent, you know, Martha, you've raised your kids. There has to be rules and regulations, and the borders must remain strong. And most Latin Americans, most Latins um, uh, around the the, uh, uh, Western Hemisphere, they get it, and and they would support it. They understand what's coming across. You know, it's, uh, you know, we had this horrible murder three weeks ago here in Georgia of Lake and Riley uh, by a Venezuelan. Uh, illegal immigrant that, you know, I'm not going to call him undocumented because he crossed the border. He got some sort of documentation uh, and then went to New York, was living there for a period of time, interacted with police a couple of times there, left New York and came to Georgia, interacted with police at least one time while he was in Georgia. So this this man was known to our government. It's, you know, to me, when I hear think of an undocumented immigrant or an illegal immigrant, it's somebody that just snuck across the border and they got nothing, right? This is somebody who actually is awaiting an asylum hearing, okay? And, you know, it's, it's just horrible. But I think in Isn't so that, way she represents, she and this murder represents not only illegal immigration, but what you're talking about, the human trafficking problem, as well as the fentanyl poisoning problem, because it's it's not just one problem. It's a whole, whole host of problems. And let me paint another picture. I spent a bit of time in Venezuela. As you know, I was the governor that oversaw our international broadcasting, and I had to go to Venezuela to try to keep uh, a lot of our journalists protected. And I went to Venezuela during the time of Hugo Chavez. You want to talk about uh, a descent into to the most abysmal, horrible denial of, of, of rights it was during that period that Chavez took that great country down. 
right now the oil that Venezuela has, you know, they they went under a lot. Was I mean, a lot of the uh, the economy went down into the tank so much people couldn't even buy milk. They couldn't get fundamentals for their their family. Uh, they made a deal with China to uh, in trade for oil. And so consequently, you have a great presence of China. When I was in Venezuela, I saw the presence of Iran, China, and Russia. There were parts of uh, Venezuela that had properties that not even the Venezuelan government could go into that was controlled by the Chinese. You've got areas in El Salvador that are that have a strong presence of China. You have parts of Nicaragua that have Russian tanks. And in the Darien Pass, one of our brave journalists that we work with um, told us that there were 36,000 young Chinese men going through the Darien Pass to come through the, through, the, through the southern border. Now, how did they get there? How are their tickets paid for? Why are they coming through there? Because, obviously, it's an invasion. You have Syrians. You have people that are coming in from Iran. You have people that are coming in from all over the world. And the folks that are coming in from Venezuela, remember, you know, you have this whole flight of how the drug cartels work. They are, uh, they are all, they, they're like the old uh, idea of the, of the mafia where you had certain families. You have the Russian mafia. You have the Chinese mafia working with the Mexican mafia, working with a lot of the other mafias in places like coming in through Bolivia, transported through Colombia, going through Venezuela. I mean, it is, I don't understand why these political parties, whether they're Republican or Democrat, will not wake up to the responsibility that they have to serve the American people at large and protect our borders. It's you know, disgraceful. It is disgraceful. And really, and, it's horrible. And I tell you, you know, I've, I've gone back a lot, and you can't change the past, but if you go back and you watch the inaugural address of John Kennedy, where he talked about, you know, in, reinforcing our hemisphere, lifting up our hemisphere— you know, right. if you think about if 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 we had spent more resources lifting up South America, where would we be today? And, you know, we've paid a really high price for cheap goods from China because when the textile industry was was dying in the southeast, you know, a lot of the, for a minute it went to to Central and South America but quickly it went on to China. You know, think about the jobs that could have been created. Think about the things that could have happened because I think the average person, Blanquita, wants to stay where they where they were born. The average person wants to be able to make a safe and good living where they grew up with their family. They don't want to go 10,000 miles. The average person doesn't want to do that. And, you know, it, it makes me sad because we had many opportunities over the last 50 years to do a better job. But let me ask you this. We still do. Yeah, we do. And let me ask you this question. You know, whether you liked President Obama or not, and whether you liked Donald Trump or not, they both did infinitely better jobs securing the border than um, than Joe Biden has, with the same laws that Joe Biden has. So why won't people see that logic? Because is are they so blinded by their partisan hatred that they just can't say, hey, he's doing a bad job? Well, I think there's a lot of factors in this. For example, you have uh, a lot of the, you know, you have this uh, almost a narcissistic and an arrogant press that's made a determination uh, how they want to spin things. And, you know, it's been fascinating because as you watch elections uh, to determine where people are going to get their news and how they're getting their news, they're going to go where they, where they, where they believe they can trust the news. Uh, and it's been a shock to these networks like CNN and even Fox and MSNBC because they've lost scores of viewers. But let me even put one for I want to. Last night was the Oscars. Did you watch the Oscars? I watched a little bit of it. Yes. Not All right. Well, thing. let me tell you why I thought that was. Well, I thought it was interesting because you have the you know the outrageous aspect of this guy Cena, John Cena, who goes out and he's nude except for a piece of yeah. paper yeah. covering his private parts. But you also, if you, if your listeners will go and they will Google his name, they'll see him going and making an apology to communist China because they depicted some aspect of a movie that insulted their 
concept that that Taiwan was independent and he apologizes oh, yeah. in Chinese. Yeah. If you look at, the, at, at at what's happened in Hollywood with the amount of money that has been uh, placed uh, into films, in distribution, into theaters, into actors by the communist Chinese, and you wonder where, where propaganda is happening uh, and, and, and buying ads, et cetera, you know, people need to understand that we're at war. Uh, the situation with, um, you know, we worry about the, the assault on police. Look what happened in, in New York recently uh, with these cops being beaten up. Well, people need to understand that the numbers of the of Border Patrol that are suffering, what police are suffering, and suicides, divorce, depression, because they're overworked. They're treated like they're despicable. They aren't treated as their heroes on the front line. Uh, Americans need to understand they need to get invested in. Uh, watching the State of the Union, we had to be able to sit there and say, will the guy make it? Is he going to fail? Is he on drugs? Is he on, you know, is he on overdrive because he's, he's trying to show that he has a pulse? I mean, this is not what the job is about. And to your point, whether you like or you hate Trump, we have to be able to elect people that care about the American people, that care about the Constitution, uh, that care about the laws, that respect life. Uh, we can't be sitting there trying to be able to be so woke that we have uh, to try to look cool, that our neighbors are fearful, that they're going to get canceled because they do something wrong. Uh, Americans have to get invested again in, their, in, in this country. Lankita Cullum, thank you so much for being with us today. We'll talk again soon.